morning, good afternoon, or good night, my fellow Chibits. Today, I'm going to bring all of you the weekly manga chapter review of The Promised Neverland, chapter 4. Can you believe it's already the 4th chapter now? We're on the 4th chapter. And already, I'm already so invested in this series, I'm really liking it. I hope it sticks around on Weekly Shonen Jump because it's such a good series. And also, apparently, it's also on the English Shonen Jump website. It's actually getting translated in a part of their lineup. So this is actually very good news for The Promised Neverland. That means that it's gaining traction and that there is a fan base growing for this series. And it's actually wanted by readers in America or people that read the English version of Shonen Jump on their website. It's actually wanted. So I'm very happy to see this. I'm very happy to know that the promised neverland is gaining popularity it's gaining steam and there is a possibility it will not be canceled so that's very good news it's very very good news because if one thing i'm worried about is is to get attached to the series love these characters love the setting love the story and then just get ripped away from it because it gets a rushed ending or it gets canceled by weekly shonen jump i'm glad to see it's gaining popularity and that it's actually now starting to get official english translations through shonen jump so getting off of that let's talk about the content of this chapter so one of the big things that needed to be addressed was Rey. As we know, Rey was a character that's been kind of out of the loop when it came to the main trio. You had to wear Emma and you had to wear Norman. They were both talking about the situation with the demons to the mom being, you know, like the farmer and trying to outsmart her. But Rey was always kind of cut off from this entire conversation. He was always like outside of the trio and he was constantly someone that just didn't have any role to play in these last few chapters. And with this chapter, it tries to integrate him into the group and how he's going to play a role in the upcoming events of escaping this farm. And so Ray, he gives us some pretty hard and cold truth throughout this chapter, and it's something that Emma needs to face. And I honestly, even though what Ray said, it could have been said a little bit differently, like he could have worded it better. Still, at the end of the day, what Ray said was actually something that needed to be said. It was something that you just need to face. It's the cold hard truth that... I, I highly doubt all the children are going to be able to make it out. It, it just, it's just not a possibility. I mean, it's like this, okay? Let's say you have a farm, like, uh, let's say a horses or pigs, cows, whatever, and a hole in the fence opens up and all that. Usually, people can actually catch that. The farmers can catch it if there's a big-ass hole in the fence and where uh, all of their cattle or something is running out of the fence. Usually, farmers and stuff can catch that. They, they can catch something like that. But if it's like maybe one horse or one pig or one cow escaping through the fence or something, usually you don't catch it as quick because it's not as big of a commotion and something doesn't just fill off because there's just so many of, you know, different cattle. So because of this, what Ray said, it makes a lot of sense. I mean, it's just, it's not a possibility. I mean, the only way that it's possible all the children could be saved, okay, to get out of the farm is if the mom mom was killed if she gets killed now many have been saying in the comments many of you have been saying that they should honestly just kill the mother like they should just like slit her throat or something just get her out of the way because that's the only way to really escape this and in my opinion i kind of agree with that i do agree i mean that would be the easiest method but you have to figure out that this is children this is children children very young children and just the act of murder and killing someone is a very cruel thing and not many people can do it even a grown adults can't do it. it it actually mentally scars them but on top of that these children have been raised with this person that has been kind of like their mother their entire life regardless that the mother is an evil scumbag that's using them as you know cattle for the demons it's still the point that they were raised by this person and killing that person will be probably one of the hardest things you could possibly ever do so killing the mother it's just it's not on the table i highly doubt they will kill the mother or it's going to mentally scar them completely and they're going to be fucked up for the remainder of the series so just what i'm getting at is is that right now i just highly doubt killing the mother is really the option so they can only escape with a few and that is the problem. See, if they try to escape with a bunch, it's just going to get noticed. The mother's going to notice it, and then something's going to be off, and then, you know, they're all going to get captured. I mean, let's just, let's do a hypothetical, okay? Let's say all the children, they do manage to get out of the wall, off the farm. And, like, let all the children, they all escape, okay? They get out of the wall. What then? What then? Because as we know, there's demons out there. Now, we know the world has been kind of corrupted or the demons have taken over for at the very least 30 years now in the human society. We don't know exactly how the world is outside of the walls. We don't know what has changed. We don't know if there's maybe some coexistence with demons and humans. We have no idea. I mean, there could be like some form of trade agreement or something, but we have no idea exactly how the world is outside of the walls. But we know 30 years have passed since the demons supposedly came around into 
society. So the big question is, is like what happens next? When you escape the wall, what then? These are children, okay? And if they venture outside the wall, they're not going to have a home. They don't have a home. They're pretty much on the fucking run. They're escape livestock. They are running from the farmer. And that is bad. You're going to probably have search teams, probably demons trying to find their merchandise, trying to find them to where they can bring them back into the fence. That's probably what's going to happen. There's going to be a big-ass search party. It's like breaking out of a prison or something. That's kind of exactly what is going to happen. And let's just say they don't get searched for. Okay, let's say they magically get out. Where are they going to go? They, they don't even know how the world is outside of the wall. They don't know where to go. They don't know if there is any human resistance at all or if humans willingly give up these children to be livestock. We have no idea how the world works. So these children are walking in blind. So saving all these kids, it's just it's not a possibility. If you have a small group, it is a possibility. So what's going on here is letting us know the cold hard truth that a lot of these characters, these, you know, kids are going to get killed before the end of the day, before they leave this, you know, farm, a bunch of them are going to get killed, and I'm willing to bet you, I'm willing to bet you one of the trio is probably going to die, if I had to place my bets, I'm going to probably say Norman's probably going to die, now, the reason why I'm not saying Ray is because Ray seems like that character that is one of those characters that go, uh, like, goes against Emma the, throughout the entirety of the series, and then Norman is going to be that type of character that either shifts over to being like an evil bastard, or someone that gets killed to sacrifice himself to save everybody else. Something like that's probably going to happen, because the way he was talking to Ray in this chapter, he seemed very manipulative. For instance, he manipulates people into doing certain things he wants to do, and the way he said like he'll do anything for Emma, he loves her and all that, it felt like he's someone that's willing to kill off everyone just to save her and even himself. So I feel like before everything is said and done, either A, this character, he's going to be a spy, or he's going to be someone that's going to, you know, sacrifice himself to save Emma, or he's going to kill everybody just to save Emma, and Emma's going to be the only survivor out of all of them. One of the others probably going to happen. So that's kind of what the main focus of this chapter was. Now, besides that, Yamato yeah, the mom is starting to realize that the kids are missing. Three kids are missing. She sees them on her radar, and then she's probably going to go off and try to find them. So that's kind of what's been also setting up in this chapter. So overall, that's pretty much about it. I mean, a lot of dialogue and conversation about accepting the truth. Emma has to come to terms with it. I mean, her heart is in the right place. She's doing a very good deed. I mean, I know that what she's saying is like something that she needs to just come to terms with and accept that she can't save everyone. But as I said, she is a child. All of them are children. Even though they're incredibly intelligent, you, you, you can't throw aside that child inside of you. And I mean, even though she's naive, she is a very good person. And I respect that at the very least, that she's willing to save the kids, even though it might cost all their lives. I still respect her for at the very least caring enough instead of caring about herself. It shows a little bit more about her personality. So yeah, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. You all have a wonderful day or nights wherever you live. Please be safe. She be out.